Hey everyone, welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. Today I have two Omega Speedmasters on the table in front of the camera. My uh, most recent pickup, the new Meta Certified Sapphire Sandwich with the 3861 movement. And it's right next to the recently discontinued Sapphire Sandwich with the 1863 movement. And in this video, I want to highlight the differences between the two and try to give those of you cross shopping these watches just some more information because, you know, throughout my process of trying to decide which moon watch to put in my own rotation, I had to answer these questions. Is the old one, is it better? Is the new one worth the money? Are the upgrades great? How sharp are the edges? You know, um, I'm going to get into my opinions here, but at the end of the day, I want to just give you some more information and help you arrive at the decision uh, that would be best for your rotation. I really think the new Metis Moonwatch is worth the upgrade. It's worth the premium. It's a better watch. It does a lot of things better, but at the same time, the old moon watch, or I say the old moon watch, it's just barely been discontinued. In fact, it's still available at most authorized dealers. Omega is just selling off the remaining stock that they have. So at the moment it's available, but this one excels in certain areas. And I think it actually does a couple things better than the new upgrade. And so let's get into those details here. Let's start with the dimensions and the fit. Uh, the new moon watch is actually an entirely new case. We have an entirely new movement, new bracelet, new case, new packaging. Uh, so it really is a brand new model, even though visually it looks very similar to the 1863. But you guys can see here the dimensions on the screen. The new one is just slightly wider in dimension, but it is quite a bit uh, shorter in overall lug to lug length, which I think really aids in the wearability and looks a little bit more retro inspired with that more squat profile. It's also slightly thicker which I really appreciate as a watch fan. I think that's a great move. The bracelet tapers to a higher degree, and that is, is really where it's felt. The old moon watch, the 1863, has a very solid, hefty, uh, dominant presence on wrist. And for reference, my wrists are 7.25 inches in circumference. And I like the rigidity. I like the look. I, I think the <laughs> this moon watch, the 1863, is phenomenal. And so if you like that more solid, modern feeling or modern wearing watch, you're going to gravitate toward the 1863. If you like a more vintage inspired look, if you like a more, uh, how would you say it, a lighter, smaller fit with more flex and give in the bracelet, you're really going to gravitate toward that uh, 3861. I find it more comfortable. I like the fit. And I will answer the question, does it have unusually sharp edges to where you're going to cut yourself? No, it doesn't. I've been wearing this watch nonstop for the past couple weeks. In fact, I took this camping last weekend. Uh, so I, I've worn this, you know, I've slept with it. I've camped with it. I've worn it all the time. I've exercised with it on. So uh, no, I have not noticed any hot spots or irritation or hair pulling. But I will say the edges are just ever so slightly more harsh than they are on the 1863. It's it's barely noticeable if you rub your fingers along the case and along the bracelet, along the clasp, but there is a difference. And so I will give the nod to a more comfortable fit on the new moon watch, but I think the finishing is just slightly more refined on the old moon watch, uh, just for the fact that the edges aren't quite as abrupt, even though again, I have not noticed any discomfort. I have not cut myself or anything like that. Uh, not at all. So that's my opinion on the controversy, con controversy, excuse me, of the finish on the new moon watch. Now let's talk about the big change and that's going to be the movement. I'm going to play some macro video here on the screen and talk about the dimensions, talk about the specs, talk about the finish and highlight the differences here. So the new Metis moon watch, obviously it's Metis certified. So it's certified by the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. It's also a certified chronometer. So it's very well dialed in. It's accurate. It's anti-magnetic. We now have a coaxial escapement and uh, we have, I think, eight more joules, 26 joules on this as opposed to 18 joules 
on the 1863. And if you look at the balance, you guys can notice a variable inertia system for regulating the balance, the small screws in the oscillating balance wheel. I think that is a more sophisticated way for regulation. And so I like to see that. As far as the finish of the movements, they're very comparable. I would say the 1863 feels a little bit more warm and classic with its finish, and I'll drop in some macro of that one. I don't know the answer to this, but I believe, I would estimate, that the 1863 is hand-finished. It's a step above the 1861 in a Hesselite moon watch that you can't see. If you, if you look at a case back on a Hesselite moon watch, the movement is actually not very attractively finished. So I believe the 1863 is hand finished. You can see it, the unglage. You can see a little bit of irregularity in the gold inlay in the text. And so it, it comes across as kind of an artisan product, very warm, classic, beautiful, even though the architecture isn't very sophisticated. It's not going to win any awards for accuracy. Most moon watches pre metis they're going to be running anywhere from 8 to 12 seconds fast per day. That's totally normal. It's not a chronometer. It doesn't have hacking. Uh, so anyways, that that is the 1863. I'm a big fan of it. I have no problem with non-hacking. So going back to the 3861, the finish is very similar, but I believe this is machine finished. And I look at all of the nuance. It's still classically beautiful with perlage work, Geneva striping. Uh, we have very clinical looking engraving and infill when it comes to the colorization. And then if you look at the edges, the, if, if you look at the anglage on the plates, you'll notice some vertical striations. So I don't believe this is hand finished. This does look machine finished. And so it does lose a very minuscule amount of charm an appeal, that artisan feel. It feels more clinical than it feels warm, if that makes sense. But when it comes to the tech specs, when it comes to the accuracy, there really is no comparison. The new Metis certified movement is phenomenal. And mine's running like plus two seconds after a, a full week. Like it is dialed in. It is incredible. So uh, I like that. I think the movement alone would be worth the upgrade. Now let's answer another question that I get pretty regularly. And that is Bruce, are the bracelets interchangeable? And I've, I've tried this. I've taken the new bracelet off of the Metis moon watch and I've placed it on the 1863 and it's a perfect fit. And I'll drop in pictures here so you guys can see the fitment and everything. But if you have an old moon watch, an 1861 or an 1863, and you don't want to make that change over um, to the new Metis 3861, but you do like the bracelet, you, you do like the fit, you can buy a new bracelet and fit it onto your 1861 or 1863, and it's going to be completely compatible. And so that is a nice thing. Now let's talk about a few other things here. Let's go on on the dial on a macro level. I do like the step dial better. I do think the loom is way better on the new one with the application. It's a thicker printing and it's it seems to be infilled in some areas within that step dial. I love the applied logo that you will only find on the Sapphire Sandwich of the Metis Certified Moon Watch. That's a nice touch. That's, that's something that you would find on a vintage Omega Speedmaster reference. I think the printing is overall a little bit more tidy and clean. There's great contrast. And if you look at the indexing around the circumference of the dial, because Omega has omitted some of those hashes, you see more black shining through or coming through. And so the smoky ring, so to speak, of the sapphire sandwich is not as noticeable on the Meta Certified Moon Watch because you're getting more black. And I've just got a little visitor here. Uh, this is my sweet daughter who, is it time to leave? Okay, guys, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to a family barbecue. I'm actually going to put on the Speedmaster and I will be back. It's house. Oh, we're going to Jay's house. Just so you guys know, I'm going to put on the new movement here and I'll be back for part two. So stay tuned. I'm back. It's actually the next day. Had a great barbecue with family. And uh, we have the two watches back on the table. And I want to wrap up this casual comparison 
and just let you guys know what I like more about each one and just take my opinion, my information here for whatever you value it as. So let me begin with the Sapphire Sandwich, the 1863. There's a couple things I think it does better. I really like the way this feels more hefty, more solid on wrist, more contemporary when it comes to the execution. A lot of days, you know, actually most days, I prefer the more comfortable, lighter, more flexible fit of the Meta Moon Watch. But some days I want to feel that solidarity on wrist. I want to get that added weight and the more dominant profile and fit. And so this really has that. If you like a more solid, more hefty watch, you'll enjoy the Sapphire Sandwich, the 1863, a little bit better. And then there are a couple of small little details that I think are a little bit more refined on this discontinued generation. When it comes to the edges, they're not quite as abrupt or harsh. Again, not an issue, I think, but it makes a little bit of a difference. And then you look at the text on the dial, specifically the logo, that pyramid form. I think it's more proportional on this 1863. I compare it to the 3861, and I, yeah, I do like the applied logo better. I, I think the printing is a little bit more defined and crisp and carries nicer contrast, but it's almost oversized. It doesn't have that, you know, that gradual progression in scale, that pyramid form. It's almost too big. In fact, it's a missed opportunity on the part of the swatch group. If they were to make the font there, that area, the exact same size, same font as the original moon watches from the 1960s, I think that would be a great win. So uh, yeah, a bit of a missed opportunity there. And then if you flip the watch over and take a look at the movement, I think I overuse the words here in this presentation, but the 1863 feels more warm, feels more artisan. The 3861, even though it is technically very superior to the 1863, it feels just a little bit more cold or clinical. So uh, take that for whatever you uh, value it as. And then the last thing that I think is just miles nicer about the 1863. And that's the extras, the box, the big box presentation kit, which if you look at is absolutely ridiculous. It's oversized and you get all this swag. Omega is really playing up the history, you know, of the moon watch. And I love it as a fan. I, I eat it up. I think it's great. I like to get swag with my watch purchases, even if that box you know, goes on the bookshelf back there or sits in a safe or in a closet. I like getting the extras. I like getting the extra straps. I like getting the little cubby holes, the medallion, uh, the loop, the changing tool. I think Omega did a fantastic job with the size, with the ridiculousness and the satisfaction that you get with that massive box. Uh, really, it, it's great. And I was very disappointed when I unboxed the new one only in regards to the box and the extras because you don't get a NATO. You don't get a NASA Velcro strap. You don't get a loop. You don't get anything extra outside of kind of a cool little travel tote that you can construct that has the Speedmaster signature, very similar to what Zenith has done with some of their watch releases in the past. So, I mean, it's cool. And if I didn't know the big box, if I'd never seen that, I would geek out over the ballistic nylon, the Velcro. I would think it's really appropriate, especially when you compare it to the normal wood lacquer presentation boxes that you get with the Seamaster and with the Aquaterra line and the other models from Omega. They, they, they know how to do a good box, but they just didn't do the best box. They should have kept up with the big box. I really think they should have. So anyways, that's what I like better about the 1863. On the whole, though, I really feel the Metis Moon Watch, it's far better. I like the case better. I, I, I like the dimensions better. I love the loom. I love the step dial. I, I do think it is more akin to the vintage references that I hold in high regard and high esteem. And the bracelet just can't be beat in the comfort department. The clasp is great. Again, a bit of a missed opportunity with no sliding micro adjustment system. But when it comes to the size, when it comes to the enlarged oval fu uh, function pushers for, for disengaging the clasp, much better, more comfortable, 
And um, the biggest part really is the movement. You can't beat this accuracy. It has the hacking. It has the anti-magnetic properties. Although it is slightly more clinical and machine finished, it's still beautiful. And I'll spend time just looking at the details and actuating the chronograph from the reverse side of the watch. And there are also a couple little things that I enjoy more. Uh, I really like the step dial. I really like the loom. I mentioned those, those aspects. But you go to the case back and you look at the way the case back is constructed with the finish, this being brushed and having more pleasantly proportioned text around that exhibition window. I think those are nice little details uh, th that enhance the watch and also getting a little bit less haze or smoke in that ring. Uh, those reflections around the box sapphire crystal, I think also help the watch to a small degree. So definitely the more contemporary watch, but the more vintage inspired or vintage feeling watch between the two. I prefer it. This is the one that's going to stay in the collection that I'm going to enjoy and uh, any day but Tuesday, right? The Speedmaster is cool any day but Tuesdays. And this 1863, I'm going to be boxing up tonight. I'm going to be selling it to Kevin. So shout out Kevin of the Wrong Time Watch channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Uh, he's very excited about adding the Sapphire Sandwich. Says it's a long-term uh, kind of grail watch of his. So I'm happy to cut him a deal. <laughs> I won't miss it because... I've got its replacement right here. And at the end of the day, there is no right answer. The right answer for me is the new Metis version. But for you, you know, it might be the discontinued variation. You might enjoy that one more. Maybe you have one. You want to keep the big box that's better, but you want to buy the bracelet that's more comfortable on the Metis and, and just, you know, put it on your version. There is no right answer or wrong answer in my opinion. And I'll leave you guys with one final thing because I've gotten a few of these questions. Uh, and that is which one will be more valuable in the future? It's a question that we seem to ask ourselves a lot as watch enthusiasts. And it's not very exciting. Like it's, it's kind of fun to speculate. But at the end of the day, I'd rather just wear the watches and not worry about appreciation but uh, specifically with this discontinued variation, we've already seen a decent bump in value over the past six months. You know, it's gone up a good $800. Will that continue? Most likely. Is it going to reach lucrative levels to where you're going to make money if you quote unquote invest in new old stock? I don't think so. I really don't. Because there have been tens of thousands of these Speedmasters produced that have the awesome big box. And there are a lot of people speculating right now, like, hey, should I hold on? When should I sell? I just don't think the market is going to be lucrative enough for the time and the effort into, hey, am I going to make some money or am I not going to make money? Here's where I think it could be lucrative. If you buy one of these and you don't wear it, you keep the stickers on, you put it in the big box, you put it in a safe, and you have everything. You have the outer cardboard box that's made in China or Thailand or wherever it's made. You have the whole set, right? All of the extras. And it's just in pristine, perfect, beautiful condition, all original. And you keep it for, you know, 15 years, 20 years, because at that point, that far down the line, Something in that good of condition is a rarity. And you see those types of things on, say, Antiques Roadshow, where you have an item that's not necessarily common or uncommon, like there's a good amount produced. But over the span of time, you know, there's just not a lot of examples available in perfect, pristine, original condition. So in that instance, yeah, I think it would be more valuable. And that would be great, but you're not going to be wearing it <laughs> over the years. And even then, I don't know to what degree it would appreciate. Maybe it would be enough to where you're tempted. And maybe, you know what, it's just not worth it to you. So at the end of the day, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit. Let me wrap up. I don't think value should be the driving force behind your decision. It should be which features speak to you the most. Do you like the charm of the old one? Do you like the upgrades of the new one? which one would be best in your own rotation and just make your, uh, make your choice accordingly. That's what I've done. And uh, I thank you for watching today. Let me know if you have any 
specific questions. And if you're shopping for an Omega, I want to put a link in the description to the authorized dealer where I purchased my Metis Moon Watch, my guy Brad at Brentel Miller Jewelers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And as of the last time I talked to him, which was only a couple of days ago, he had the new one, he had the discontinued version, he had the coaxial version, you know, the larger racing. He had a first Omega in space, which has been discontinued. So we still had some good stock available. So uh, all of that's in the description. Thank you guys again for watching this rather long and interrupted video. But thanks for your patience. Again, reach out with questions and uh, see you next time.